Okay, so <coughs> today's lecture, we will continue with uh, the concept of Eigen function for year for year series. So we just want to continue that. And uh, last time we finished slide set number seven. We are going to continue with slide set number eight. So by the time other people join, any questions from whatever we have covered? <coughs> so if there are no questions, then uh, let's just uh, start with today's lecture. So slide set number eight. And uh, here we are going to cover Fourier series and <coughs> extend the concept of Fourier series to Fourier transform. We will see that what is Fourier series, what is Fourier transform. Although the basics we cover to some extent, we are going to extend those concepts. So what all topics are going to be covered? And uh, what sections we are actually going through. So single system, Kornel-Wilski. So these are what we are going to cover. Those of you who are following from YouTube, MIT or Stanford lectures, so you should notice Fourier series and Fourier transforms. OK, so talking about Fourier series. There were a few things we said about Fourier series. The first thing was it is valid for a periodic function periodic function or periodic signal. First. Second thing is a Fourier series actually shows you that how a periodic function can be represented or expressed in shape of some of complex exponentials which are harmonically related. This was the second thing. And third thing we saw was how to find those coefficients a k. We saw a formula for that integration over a time period of that periodic function multiplied by e raised to the power of uh, minus j k omega naught t dt. So these were three things that we saw. <coughs> if you have any periodic function, then we can express it in shape of sum of complex exponentials which are harmonically related. And we know that the harmonics would be harmonics of this omega naught, which is 2 pi over t, where t is a positive time period. So these were the things that we covered. We saw a formula <coughs> for computing the coefficient a k and we know that your omega naught is related to the time period t of your periodic function. So this thing is important that Fourier series is basically meant for periodic function. And it shows you that how a periodic function can be expressed as a sum of complex exponentials, complex exponents which are harmonically related. Now let's see a few examples of this uh, Fourier series. In maths, you had already done this. It is more or less the same thing we are doing here, but we are going a bit deeper into the meaning of these things, that what is Fourier series, where it is used, things like that. OK, so let's take first example where the function given to us is sine omega naught t. It's a sinusoid, so a periodic function with a particular time period. And if we want to express this periodic function, as Fourier series, we know fundamental frequency of sine omega naught t is omega naught. This we already know from the knowledge of sinusoids. So whatever is multiplied by t, this is your angular frequency omega naught or fundamental frequency. So it's not fundamental period, it's basically fundamental frequency or fundamental angular frequency as we say. OK. Now, if you want to express this sine omega naught t in terms of complex exponents, we can directly use Euler. So he actually showed us that we can express a sinusoid in terms of complex exponents, which are a conjugate of each other. And the coefficients are going to be this. So e raised to the power of j omega naught t minus e raised to the power of minus j omega naught t, whole thing divided by 2j. This is your sine omega naught t. 
and this expansion if you see is your four year series this is your four year series and here we can see that k is plus 1 here we can say that k is minus 1 so plus 1 minus 1 so we have this uh, a1 and a minus 1 given to us as 1 over 2j and minus 1 over 2j and there are no other you can say harmonics present so ak are zero for all other values of k so this type of sinusoid if you are given we don't even need to use the formula here we can directly uh, write it as complex exponents and that will be your fourier series so very simple very easy and the coefficients we can see these are complex coefficients a of k and sorry k equal to 1 here here k is equal to 1 and here your k is equal to minus 1 now how do we express your fourier series on figure on graph or diagrammatically this is actually expressed in this particular shape where we have this k axis we know that k is supposed to be an integer having values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 so we express fourier series on k axis and the value of these coefficients we express on k axis if the coefficients were real it will be just k axis and the value of that magnitude will be just shown right here if they are complex then obviously we need to represent the magnitude part and the phase part of ak so here this is complex a1 this is here so magnitude part is going to be 0.5 and the phase part of this thing which is complex number comes out to be here minus pi by 2 similarly for k equal to minus 1 we have again magnitude equal to half and the phase will be equal to your pi by 2 so these things are shown right here so this is how we express the fourier series diagrammatically or on graph we just represent it on k axis that what all coefficients are present and seeing this representation we know that how many harmonics are present because we know that k equal to 0 corresponds to your zero harmonic or dc value k equal to plus minus 1 is basically the first harmonic k equal to plus minus 2 is the second harmonic and similarly third fourth fifth so if we see this representation we know that only first harmonic is present that means just one frequency is present and otherwise also we know sinusoid omega not t is just a single frequency so what we saw here is that using euler we can directly write fourier series for a sinusoid and we can directly Uh, write down the coefficients and once we know the coefficients we can diagrammatically express these coefficients on the k axis if it is complex uh, values then magnitude and phase will be represented separately okay so let's just uh, see that the same thing if we want to do using the formula right here so instead of using euler if you just want to use the formula for ak then how do we do it so let's see <coughs> so we know that ak is equal to 1 over time period integral over a single time period for x of t e raised to power of minus j k omega not t dt so we just need to show or prove that the formula also works it will also give us the same values how do we do that so let's see so it will be 1 over t integral over your time period of x of t which is sin omega not uh, t into e raised to power of minus j k omega not t dt and we can just take the period from 0 to t so let's uh, this sin can be expressed as your e raised to power of j omega not t minus e raised to power of minus j omega not t whole thing divided by 1 over 2j which we can take it outside so the 2j part can be taken outside into e raised to power of minus j k omega not t dt from 0 to t 
So this will end up giving us basically two terms inside integral. And we can just write those two terms as 1 over 2j times t. And inside the integral, we have two terms 0 to t. e raised to power of, we can combine these two together and write it as uh, j. And uh, it will be 1 minus k omega naught t minus the other two. We can also combine these two together. It will be minus j into 1 plus k omega naught t dt. These are the two terms that we will have. And we can take integration of this and see whatever is the answer. Now, a complex exponential of the type e raised to power of j anything omega naught t. A complex exponential of this type. If we integrate it over a time period, it will always give value equal to 0 for k not equal to 0. Here. And it will give you value equal to integration 0 to t dt for k equal to 0. Because e raised to power 0 becomes 1. And this integration is going to give you value t. So with this knowledge, if we see here, k can take any value. We are trying to compute a k. We can just keep plugging value different k's and keep finding out the answer. But whatever integer value we take, this thing is going to end up becoming an integer. Same goes here. And if k is equal to 1, this becomes 0 and if k is minus 1 this becomes 0. So only for those things we are going to have let's say k equal to 1 we are going to have 2j t integral 0 to t. Uh, this will become 0 obviously we'll just take this thing will become 1 And this whole integral will become 0 because e raised to the power of something will be equal to this, which will end up becoming t. So 1 over 2j t into t, which will be equal to 1 over 2j. And similarly for a with k equal to minus 1, this inside integral the first term dt integral will become zero the second integral will be minus one e raised to the power of zero dt zero to t this will be minus one over two j into t into minus t and this will end up giving you minus one over two so rest for all k, rest for all k, you will see that a k would be equal to 0 for all k uh, apart from plus and minus 1. OK. So we end up getting the same values right here. And then we can express this a k against k. So k equal to 0 also is 0, k equal to 1. The magnitude part is half. And k equal to minus 1. The magnitude part is half again. Rest all zeros. And similarly, we can just plot the phase as plus and minus pi. So we ended up getting the same thing for this also. And this is what we see right here also. So instead of keeping it t, they have just changed t to 2 pi over omega naught. That's the only difference. They have solved the same way. Same way. So if we just see right here, a k 1 over t, 0 to t, this thing, and this, if you just 
take it as two complex exponents then we combine the two complex exponents and this is actually 1 over 2 uh, j and 2 t 0 to t so this when k is plus 1 or minus 1 we end up getting this integral e equal to t for plus 1 and minus t for minus 1 so therefore a 1 is this and a minus 1 is so we showed actually that we can either use Euler or we can use the formula and get the same results and the property that we used right here is that complex exponent is also a periodic function it is a cosine and a sine and both cosine and a sine if you integrate over a single time period will end up giving you zero so complex exponent if integrated over one particular time period will end up giving you zero value only once we have this complex exponent with power of zero that this becomes actually one and that integral evaluates to t and same is here also so using this property we actually showed that the Fourier series can either be computed for sinusoid using Euler or by using the formula for computing coefficients so first example we saw right here now instead of single sinusoid if we have multiple sinusoids if we have additive sinusoidal series so we have one two and three sinusoids and these three sinusoids if you see they have fundamental frequency of omega naught and its multiple this is going to be two omega naught this is omega naught omega naught so fundamental frequency is still omega naught so this is periodic x of t is periodic function and it has fundamental frequency of omega naught and the other frequencies are just but just its multiple so what we can do is just simply replace your sinusoid with complex exponent using Euler so this sine omega naught t ends up giving you this cosine omega naught t ends up giving you this and this cosine 2 omega naught t plus pi by 4 ends up giving you this so whatever is inside the bracket ends up coming right here so once we have this then you can just combine the complex exponents together and write it this way so this 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 and this so k equal to plus one k equal to minus one k equal to and coefficients accordingly so p value is a naught so, and a1 coefficient here a minus one a2 a minus two so we have all these values written right here and if you want to express them diagrammatically because these are complex values we have to again uh, represent magnitude separately and phase separately so if you see the magnitude part of a k against k for k equal to 0 the magnitude is 1 and similarly for a equal to 1 we just find out the magnitude we know how to find out magnitude of a complex number square of this plus square of this under the root comes out to be value right here and similarly the magnitude part here and for a2 and a minus 2 and similarly we can find out the phase for these complex number also for this this is basically polar representation of a complex number so magnitude is written right here a2 magnitude is half and a minus 2 magnitude is half and phase part this is pi by 4 a2 is pi by 4 so it is r is per j theta type of thing polar representation so and for here it is minus pi by 4 for this thing you have to compute the phase using tangent inverse y over x type of thing so you can always find out whatever is the value right here so we have seen how to compute Fourier series for simple sinusoids using Euler and representing it as complex exponents. And then these complex exponents, whatever is the uh, coefficients, those coefficients, AK, we can uh, show diagrammatically on the K axis against K. And if those coefficients are complex, then we have to have 
have two representation, one for the magnitude part, the other for the phase part. So, second example, not one but multiple sinusoids. Let's take another example, a third one. Now, this example is interesting and important. Here, instead of giving us a sinusoid, we are given a periodic square wave. We are given a periodic square wave which is from minus t1 to t1 and its time period is given as t. So either we can write it as t by 2 and minus t by 2 or you can just take it from 0 to t right here. So a uh, square wave. Now this square wave is a very important wave. Especially you computer engineers will come across these square waves a lot. And same for electrical engineers also. So square wave is a very important wave. But as we can see that it's a periodic square wave. So if you want to write this type of uh, wave in terms of Fourier series, so how do we do that? For Fourier series, we just need to deal with one particular time period. Either we can take time period from 0 to t or from minus t by 2 to t by 2, any particular single time period. So if you take single time period from minus t by 2 to t by 2, we can represent single time period as this. This is just one period. Over one period, x of t is 1 from minus t1 to t1 and it is 0 otherwise. So this is actually showing you this. Either we can write it like this or we can just say that from minus t1 till t1 it is 1. Either you can write it like this or write it like this is 1 the same thing. Magnitude t less than t1. Similarly, the other part from t1 to t by 2 is 0 and similarly from minus t1 to minus t by 2 is 0. Either you can write it in two parts or you can write together this that magnitude of t is basically between t1 and t1. So this is representing one particular period. Okay, now to compute the coefficients. To compute the coefficient, we can just use the formula. A k is equal to 1 over t. Integration over one time period. Here the time period that we are taking is from minus t by 2 till t by 2 of x of t dt, uh, x of t into e raised to power of correct this Sorry. so the time period that we are taking is from minus t by 2 till t by 2 and x of t into e raised to power of minus j k omega naught t dt this is the formula so in this formula we can plug in the value now if we take this period from minus t by 2 to t by 2 this whole x of t is 0 all up till this value and up till this value and it is 1 in between minus t1 to t1. So this product would be 0 from this uh, t1 to t2 and this will be equal to 1 and it will be equal to 1 from minus t1 to t1. 1 into e raised to the power of minus j k omega naught t plus 0, we don't even need to write that the other part. So it is only in between this <coughs> minus t1 to t1 that this x of t is 1, otherwise it is 0. So this integration, we can just write it this way. This is what is written right here. So 1 over t minus t1 to t1, 1 into e raised to the power of minus j k omega naught t. <coughs> so we end up getting this. Now notice that this is a complex exponent, but we are not evaluating this complex exponent over a complete time period. It is, we are evaluating this complex exponent over some other duration. So we have a duration. It will be the same function divided by its uh, derivative. We end up getting this and limits from minus t1 to t1. We can just plug in the limits for t and we end up getting this value right here. And we can divide this value by 2j outside we have 2j. So originally we have this so this j and j part will cancel out and we end up getting this now this part here is complex exponents conjugate of each other subtracted over 2j is basically sine so we can just write it as sine k omega naught t1 and denominator is having k 
omega naught t. So we end up getting this thing. And again, what we can do is we can also replace the value of uh, let's say t and t will be 2 pi over omega naught that will just omega naught will cancel and you will end up getting this value right here. So this is your ak and then we can just plot ak against k. Now notice that this ak that we get is not a complex value for each k it will give you some real value. So we can just directly plot AK against K. So we can directly plot the value of AK against K for different values of K, K equal to zero, K equal to plus minus one, plus minus two. We can just plot these values. And to plot these values, obviously we need to have some value for this duration T1. So accordingly, we can just do a plot right here. And this plot is actually shown right here. So this is the plot of AK against K. And if you see, we have a very interesting shape right here. And this shape, we have already seen this shape. This is the shape for a sink. So let me just do a few things here. If you notice the value of AK, this was in the shape of sine of something, sine of something over some constant times the same thing. And this is basically a sine shape. Now the sink. is a very interesting shape and you already know that how it looks like it is basically uh, we try to okay. so it will have a main low and side lows it never really ties down to zero goes on and on and on so if we see that we can keep plugging in value of k and keep getting values and it goes on and on and on and all the way to infinity so what actually that tells us that tells us that we have infinite series of non-zero coefficients so in other words, we know that k equal to zero corresponds to DC value, k equal to plus minus one first harmonic, plus minus two second harmonic, it goes on. So we have infinite harmonics, or in other words, infinite set of frequencies present in your square wave. The other thing, if you see here, this T1, this is basically the on time and the rest is the off time. So this on time ratio with off time, if we change or if we just make it thinner, make it smaller. Then what happens to these values of coefficients? So if we have the T1 equal to this, or in other words, the on time is basically one fourth of T. It is basically both ways about half, you can say half duty cycle. So half duty cycle. We normally call that as duty cycle, the ratio of on time to off time for a square wave. So for half duty cycle equal on and off time, this is the shape. And if we change it and make it thinner, and we have, let's say, one fourth duty cycle, then what happens? So on time is just one fourth, three fourths is off time. Then what happens? And similarly, if T1 is one sixteenth, or in other words, duty cycle of one eighth, then what happens? So you can see that it remains the sink, but the main lobe, main lobe of the sink, that tends to become wider and side lobe becomes smaller. The other important thing to note is basically square wave and sink. Square wave and sink relationship. This square wave and sync relationship is something that you will notice a lot going forward in multiple different domains. So two or three things we saw. If you have a periodic square wave, the number of harmonics present in that uh, periodic square wave are infinite or set of frequencies present are infinite or I will reword to 
Fourier said that you can create periodic uh, series or periodic signal using there is a harmonics complex harmonics so how many complex harmonics or how many complex frequencies are required to actually build this type of signal they are infinite so these are few things which are interesting and important so square wave once we actually see all what all harmonics are present we end up seeing that infinite set of harmonics are present and if you want to see the magnitude of coefficients we end up seeing that the magnitude actually shows the shape of sync and the other thing is if you just make this thing thinner and thinner you see that your main lobe of that sink actually becomes wider and wider so few things we saw so these were about two or three examples that we did now another interesting aspect about fourier series is basically what we call as convergence of fourier series now although we know that fourier series is representing a periodic signal but an important thing is not every periodic signal can be represented as fourier series or fourier series does not exist for all periodic signals but however for all important and interesting signals fourier series does exist so how do we know that fourier series exist for a particular periodic signal or not that was shown to us by a scientist or mathematician by the name of dirichlet and he came up with dirichlet conditions he said that fourier series will exist if dirichlet conditions are obeyed or satisfied and he came up with three conditions 1 2 and 3 and i will go over them but you will see that they all three boil down to the same conditions and these conditions are in order for a fourier series to exist your periodic signal should be absolutely integrable over one particular time period so over one time period if you take integration of your <coughs> uh, periodic signal on one time period only then it should give us a finite value it should not give us infinity so then your fourier series will exist so if you notice that all these signals that we saw over one time period its integral did exist now integration of a particular you can say function over any duration is basically area under the graph so you see that area under the graph is going to give us a finite value it's like got a finite area one thing the other thing is notice the formula for computing the coefficient this is 1 over t integral over a time period x of t e raised to the power of uh, minus j k omega not t dt now in order for this coefficient to be you can say computed we want that this integration should give us some value now if integration of x of t gives us infinity then integration of x of t multiplied by complex exponent will also give you infinity and another x of t is absolutely integrable that will also so they are actually linked to each other it is basically seen that way so whatever way you see we actually say that the condition for the dirichlet was that your function should be absolutely in for one particular time period or area under graph in one time period should give you a finite value it should have a finite area this is dirichlet condition and this is the main condition this is the main condition rest of the condition are you can say you will see that it all boils down to the same thing let me see the second condition in any finite interval x of t is of bounded variations and there are no more than finite number of maximas and minimas during any single period of the signal now if x of t is bounded that means doesn't go to infinity it remains within a certain limit. then in one particular time period the number of maximas and minimas present also has are finite then integration would be possible or area under the graph would be finite value so they are also linked to each other they are talking about the magnitude part of x of t that it has to be within 
a bounded limit it should not go to infinity and the number of maximum minimum that are present also should be countable or finite the third conditions talk about the discontinuity it says that in any infinite in any finite interval of time only a finite number of discontinuities and further these discontinuities also should be finite it should not be an infinite discontinuity what's a discontinuity if a function has two values or jumps its value over one particular interval then we say we have a discontinuity here it sort of takes a jump now if this discontinuity is bounded or within a limit then fine but if this discontinuity is not finite just jumps to infinity or just this value is infinite then obviously integration or area under the graph again cannot be counted further how many discontinuities you can have that also should be countable so what talks about the magnitude being bounded and maximum minima being countable the other talks about the discontinuities being bounded or finite and that also countable number of discontinuity and both of these same condition that your function t over one particular period or in other words will not be able to compute your coefficients ak so these were your dirichlet conditions now comes the fourier series to fourier transform thing but i am not interested to start it today i will just uh, stop my lecture at this point and we'll continue the next time so any questions here